Now in its fifth season, the prestigious Party Poker World Open has come to a new venue, the Palm Beach Casino in the heart of London. 48 poker players, including some of the biggest names in the game, will be battling it out for a quarter of a million dollar top prize. This is what's going to get me busted, my big mouth. Thinking ahead 101. Ah! Come on. Oh! oh. Yay! Sorry. Lisa. He's trying to outplay me. I don't know. Sure him. You give up and then you That's win. Right. That's right. Welcome to the Party Poker World Open 5. It's one of the toughest fields in poker. With EPT winners, WPT champions, and World Series of Poker bracelet winners, they're going to be playing six heats, with the winner of each heat going straight through to the final table, and the runner-up having his second chance in our runners-up heat. And what a tournament we have to kick off with. We've got November Niner James Aikenhead, WPT champion Yevgeny Timoshenko, and the always outspoken Luke Schwartz. Hi, I'm Luke Schwartz, known as Full Flush Online. I'm not really worried about anyone in this poker world. No one's got any balls to say anything to me, to my face. I'll probably steamroll this table. I'm Ian Fraser, known as The Razor. You could sort of say I've been there and done it, got the t-shirt. Every time I see it, some chips in the middle of the table, I want them. I'm Yevgeny Tomashenko. I'm 21 years old. My biggest poker achievement was winning the WPT Championship for 2.1 million and I also recently won the World Championship of Online Poker for 1.7 million. I'm James Aikenhead from London. I've had a great year making the Poker Million Final, the World Series Europe Final, the World Series of Poker Final. Uh, I'm making a lot of finals. I'm Andy Ward, uh, Online Poker Pro. I would say I've got an even shot. Um, one thing I know how to do is gamble when I have to. Cards coming out for the very first hand of this World Open. And Phil, we talked about some of the big names here. Who do you look for to be a table dominator? Well, I think that uh, I don't want it to be the James show, but I, I think James is going to play a nice, snug, careful game for a while. And he is going to be a tough guy to contend with. So this is standard stuff right here with 300,000. I mean, eight, nine of hearts, Triv, raised, no problem. Disguised hand, very strong. A suited, Triv, call. He already had some money in the pot. But now it's always fun. This is where when somebody, when they both miss, the guy with position usually wins, and that's the advantage to the nine high here. Well, this is interesting because they've both, they've both connected, I think. A6 and 8-9, I can't see the plot. Oh, yeah, there it is. A straight draw versus top pair and a straight draw. Now, if you're Luke here... And the runner here, flush draw. He has to call. Luke likes his hand. Okay. It looks like a 7. Could be 7-10. Sick pocket 6s. Luke is pretty confident. He's ahead. Confident yep. enough that he's going to... He's gonna you know, fire most turns to build the pot rather than protect it? Yeah, and he likes this card too. Now he has a pair and a straight draw. Uh, he believes he's winning. This is just a value bet. And he's also, I think it's tough now. This The A6 has chances to win, but it doesn't look good anymore. You like the size of the bet? 14,000? 14, what was in the pot? 24. Perfect. I don't, I don't, I don't like that call. If I don't get there on the turn in this hand, I'm, I'm giving it up. Uh, Muller's got the straight outs. The nine right now make him the bottom end of a straight. He's got the ace to hit, too. But it's going to be very hard for him to find the perfect card he likes beside the four. Is that what you're saying? Right. I, yeah. I mean, he's going to feel like he's winning if he hits an ace or any straight. But still, the nine isn't like 
anything to sing home about. He really wants the four. This is a straight up value, but he's hoping that a seven will call or maybe like, there it is, it just called. It was a little bit on the greedy side, but Luke wasn't, get, if, if he was getting called, he might have gotten called for that much. Luke Schwartz, well known online for his heads up play, but mostly his trash talk. All the big names he's promised to smash up, take down, and break. In it. Introductions being made around. We're going to be sitting here a while. You might as well get to know the guy on your left. Yep. Here comes the razor. See, I told you he was, I had a feeling he was going to be more aggressive than. Too big a hand to fold it's for too five. Big, yeah, right? I think you just call it. It's a, see, this is too. It's it's like a cash game. You can, you're supposed to play some of these hands. It's, it's two and a half percent of your stack or whatever it is. It's so <coughs> call with hands like that. You're supposed to actually. Quick call from Luke. Now he does have the better hand, but if the board comes high, you give Fraser the edge, don't right. you? Right. So we have a gutter ball for Fraser. And a straight up real hand for, for uh, 8, full flush, AKA Luke Schwartz. I would call this, uh, that's because I'm sick. Oh. I think it's a fine, you know, it feels like he's going to get paid if he gets there, but he doesn't. Yeah. He hates that there's two clubs out there because one of his outs for a straight is a club, and that's. In Luke's mind, is he always winning at this stage? Luke? Check, call, check. I think Luke feels like he's against the flush draw or uh, two overs or ace five or something like that or ace five of diamonds. I think he. Okay. Check. I think he's checking to keep the pot small, feeling like he has the best hand. That's what. And to get value on the river in case Fraser has some kind of. This is a horrible card. If Fraser wants, I think he can uh, steal it. Thirty-three thousand in there. How much? Because it looks like. This is a card that could have, you know, maybe he had king, queen of diamonds, and he just peeled off, and now he's making a value bet. He knows he can't win if he doesn't bet. This would be an amazing call, given the action. It would be a very tough call. Luke can only beat a bluff, but Luke tastes the fishiness. It's tough. This is why poker's so tough. You can taste the fishiness, but it's, it's sometimes hard to call it down. No flush. Flush, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. He has to be bluffing uh, only one in three times for him to be able to call. <coughs> He's kind of but it doesn't really feel like a bluff, does it? It feels like, you know, he was in there. He call, He raised. He called. The, uh, he bet the flop. He checked the turn. Looks like he got there with a flush. <laughs> Luke really wants to call. It's a tough okay. call. If you make a call like this, you, the guy just plays differently against you for an, an hour or so. He's laid it down. And Ian Fraser won that round. That's why they call him the Razor. He's tough. He got in there in that pot. Pretty well played if you didn't have a pot. Welcome back to the Palm Beach Casino in London for the Party Poker World Open 5. 48 players started and we have Heat 1 well underway. The action's going on at the table, so let's go down and take a look. That's going to be one of the great things about this World Open. We're going to get to see situations and decisions brought on by the structure right. that we just never get a chance to. And they'll be correct, right? Yep. You want to make that pop big every time. I can't play against you. Seven's a bit of a big raise. Now Evgeny's you for flop? sure with position going to call. He's going to at least look at the flop here he is. And you, you, you favor a call <coughs> over a re-raise. I would never re-raise here with the button ace jack. It might be right, but I never would. Because you turn a real hand into junk. I would re-raise with six, ten of clubs, possibly. Because now you know that if you get re-raised, you had air anyways. See, I would not do this. I wouldn't do this. Right. But by the way, Evgeny has like three times the earn as I have in probably half the amount of time. So, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? I respect this play only because a player that's, I think, better than me is making it. Phil, he is the current WPT 25,000 champion. He is the current uh, WCOOP champion. Those uh, 
those payouts alone in excess of, of $3 million, $3.7 million this year. It's insane. I didn't even know the number was that high. I wouldn't call out a position here with nine, ten of hearts. I mean, how much do you have to pay? It was a seven, fifteen more <laughs> made it twenty-two. So there's. A this is the kind of hand you want to play against three, four people. I don't like this heads up out of position against a wick, an uber genius. It's just black, you know. How often should Timoshenko be flying continuation bet? Uh, Sixty, eighty percent. Let's put it this way, you're only, if you're Evgeny, you're only worried about king, queen, ace, king, a set, and, and bottom sets because, you, I mean, you're not worried about top set. He would have re-raised with kings. So this is just a uh, value bet, but it's also a C bet. It's both. Now, this is a real sick play. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Fraser. What's Fraser doing? He's going to represent a set. I mean, this is what he's doing. He's, he's representing... Like a set, pretty much. He's made a min raise. He's made a min raise on the 28. Min raises look very strong, right? Yep. All right. I don't. <laughs> I'm gonna rewrite my poker brain because I wouldn't have called preflop and I wouldn't have min raised here. And he's obviously gonna win it. Look at uh, you. Kenny gave the energy vibe of looking at the ceiling like gross. What did I get into? I had a real hand. Why didn't I just flat call? These are all the things he's thinking. I would th they've got no line on Fraser to ever assume this is right. basically a sick play or this early on, right? Yep. And it's going to work. Oh, you know what he might be doing? He might be thinking, hey, no, yeah, he's going to fall. The only way you can really raise there is you're going to oh, represent. everyone. Hey. I'll tell you what, you could be a young guy from the internet. <laughs> you could do it. But Ian Fraser is coming here, and he is showing these kids some new moves. Representing anything, but going that, through somehow. That was a real torture spot for Yevgeny to be in. He just knows he was beat. I mean, but he wasn't. Wow. Why is King? Big. Yevgeny looks a little stunned. Yeah, because King Seven Deuce is one of the most dry boards you can find. You know, it's like at the end of the day, he's thinking, "I never expected that from an old dude." Uh, <laughs> Ian, Ian has got some. He is. He has got some game, hasn't he? The razor. <laughs> you gotta. Yeah, like you see, that. really, that's the problem with. Uh, Oh, it was just a tough, weird spot to be in. I, that's why I don't like raising with Ace Jack. It's not a durable, super whizzingly. You know, if you get re-raise, you have to fold. I. It looked like genius, cause, but then you can get out genius by right. nine, ten of hearts. I mean, it's, I don't know. it's not durable. I like that. It's, it's not a durable hand. <laughs> right. It's. And uh, call from Christian Schaefer. Now you do you get the idea from Schaefer that he needs a level to settle into his game. And hello. Holy cow, okay. What are the dynamics of this because of last hand? Yeah, he can try and parlay the, I, you guys probably think I'm steamed now, so let me see if I can't go with that. And, <laughs> you know, he's also got the cutoff of the button. I can't see, I think he's the, right there in the hijacker cutoff. So would the dynamics of his relation with Fraser lean him towards re-raising or flat? For sure he's gonna re-raise. I mean, there's no way. Now there's two people have entered. It, you gotta re-raise this, and he's going to. It's seven again. Is it 22 the right option here, or are we looking more at something like in the 30,000 range? 24. He'll go 24 to 27. Raise 25,000. You called it. Five. Just you, you kind of, like, you know, you camouflage. There's enough camouflage with just standard size betting. You know, uh, because Fraser's called before, you expect him to call again. He's peeling off a flop. And this is great. The guy, our Schaefer fella, is for tr sure triv. This is a triv call. He's shutting down the betting. Uh, it's 18,000 to call. If he hits a set, he feels like he's going to get paid by Evgeny. Cool. You and, know, uh, the German is praying for a five like oh, nobody's respect. business. Right. Yevgeny, if a five comes, <laughs> Yevgeny's going to get whacked. That's for sure. <laughs> okay, this is... Fives can consider carrying on. Seven, eight can consider uh, hanging in there for at least one peel. He has the runner on her flush draw, runner on her straight draw, and he has a pair of sevens. So, look at that. Even against aces, he has, to he has some chances to win still. It's like, for sure it goes check, check, bet. And I think Frazier might just... 
call this one. I don't think he'll raise because he has a hand. If he has air, he can make the raise a lot easier, you know? We're going to get to see now if Fraser has got finesse or if he's just super aggro, right? Right. I like when you do the whispering thing. There it is, the call. <laughs> because we're like in a drama hand, so <laughs> for this hand, I'm going to whisper only because I think it's better. If it doesn't come 7-8, can you? He's stoked. <laughs> right. He's oh, stoked. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This, this pot has gotten big. I mean, he's going to make a bet that's big enough that Fraser has to make a decision for, for a stack yeah, in right. the first level. Right, because it means that there's, if you, often in poker in this game, the turn bet is you're deciding for the next two streets in the turn, and this is the turn. If it comes bet, Frazier has to decide, am I winning or losing? And I think Frazier, I mean, I know Frazier's a good player, so he is likely to fold because he knows he has to commit two more, it's too early to commit two more bets, which is his whole stack on this one hand. So I think it's gonna go bet, fold. Is that a reason that Timoshenko might check to get value on the river, or is the pot just so big you have to protect it? Well, I think that you've, I think that Evgeny's putting him on a 10 queen or something like that, and therefore he'll bet. I, th I think it, I think he will bet just because he thinks he's going to get called. You know? He's trying to size it right. And possibly he's thinking, hey, my opponent might have jacks, and he's letting me hang myself, and therefore I have to punish him for thinking that I'm hanging myself, which I'm not. There it is, 120-something. No, I think he's gone small. It's like, it's like, it's like 55. Oh, wow. It, what? He got him. Oh, he, he did it. He hung him by. He did the. <coughs> he made a bet that was small enough to look like he could fold to a raise. Oh my God. And Fraser's right. got them all in. This is huge for oh Timoshenko. That was a genius bet, actually. There's 522,000 in this, this pot. Is sick. If it doesn't come a seven or eight, oh Timoshenko's hung Fraser out. Wow, he only has two, three, four, five outs, ten. It's about 90 10 is the split right here. Holy he cow. He sold him a bill of goods. Holy cow. Holy cow, that took the air out of Ian Fraser in a massive way. Whoa, whoa, what was Fraser? Fraser just reckoned it was the bet <sighs> size, wasn't it? And the, the, and the dynamics. 55 looks like, yeah, it looked, wow. He was running Is that how Evgeny's been winning all this money as people hang themselves against him? <laughs> like, that is sick. So for Timo Shenko, look at this start, 522,000. But uh, as you said, Phil. Right. Fraser's just not out of it. I mean, no one's out of it. It looks, when you're sitting there with 300 and the guy just made 522, you think, oh my God, how am I going to overcome that? But it's, we're really early in this event. Ian's not out of it. Cool. <laughs> it is hard sometimes, isn't it? Like, guys like Ian Fraser and... Like maybe Andy Ward, when you're so locked into this sort of six-seater <clears throat> ram em bam -em mode, you've really, this is like an MTT. You've got to come in here and be prepared to sort of sit down and Four years ago. It's a lot. Down. It's like a cash game at the Vic. you got to take it easy. You can't just, you know. <laughs> um, it's The early rounds are really like a cash game. You just take it easy. There it is. You set mine in again. And this is all you really should be doing with sixes here, where, you know. This is an easy call. I hope that now, because only because he's the big blind and he's completing, at, is that he wouldn't have called on the button. Right. He, but this is a traditional straight up play, being on the button. You know, you don't have to put much in. And he'll shut down here. Let's see what we got. We got a flush draw. We got two flush draws. Holy as a cow. Of fact. Oh, wow. And it'll be interesting to see how Andy Ward wants to play this against the chip leader. If Genny's actually got a flush draw and a straight draw, he feels like. If he could get all of his money in, he wouldn't even mind it. I mean, that's an over, that's a big exaggeration, but that's how strong his hand is. He believes any ace, jack, or a spade is going to do it. It's bet 16. And the question is Andy Ward. He, he's not going to fold here because he's got so much value in the oh flush. Oh, my Lord. But do you, do you favor a, ch a raise here or a call overall? What hand just folded? Two sixes. Oh, okay, you're right. That was a fold. Now the, oh, I would just call. But he has. And, well, and if I don't get there in the turn, I usually fold. Cause and does Andy Ward go broke if the spade comes? He, he loses a lot. And go broke? P probably. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Timoshenko with an opportunity 
to either fire the second barrel or keep the pot small. And Evgeny is out of position, is that correct right no, now? No, he's in position. Oh, he's in position, okay. So he's definitely going to... I would actually take the free card, but... It's first hand Andy Ward has plays, played right. strong idea that he that he has a king here, strong, strong... Uh, <laughs> it, it feels, maybe he's feeling like King Ten of Diamonds or something, you know, which is, you, he's probably gonna call, so... If you know your opponent's probably going to call and you have a hand this big, you just sort of check. That's kind of, it's not that bad. You get a free card. You can't get check raised off the hand. This well, now. This is a great card in his mind. He, he's probably thinking my opponent had a king. Both players like this. 25,000. Betting 25 into it. Now, I think Evgeny might make a value raise. But it's tough here. If you make a value raise, you have to be prepared to fold if you get re re raised. The tough part about raising here is you kind of have to prepare yourself to fold to a re-raise. It's a close decision for sure. Um, but I would do it for value. Close decision, and Timoshenko okay. has made, the, made right the right decision. In against the complete range of your opponent's hands, I think this is correct. And he is he has to be prepared to fold in the 80% range to a re-raise. I think it's, yeah, he's going to flat call with flushes and re-raise with, with full houses. So... And he's also going to flat call with kings. There it is. That's the call. Andy Ward has called. He's still going to have chips left, but the ace high flush has knocked him. That river card, one he thought he wanted to see, and absolutely didn't. That was a cooler, you know. I actually like Justin. He's Welcome to guy. the Palm Beach Casino in the heart of London. This is the first heat of the world open. <laughs> and James Aiken had ace jack. He bought out of that. I love that. Already, by the way. The yeah, yeah. Aiken had, when he started the year, he probably the thought there was going to be three big buy in tournaments that he'd play World Series of Poker, World Series of Poker Europe, and the Poker Million only made the final table in all three of them. And 11,000 on the ace jack. Jorg calling behind. We are multi, multi way here. If Schaefer comes in, it's going to be like everybody. Huh. 50K in the pot already. Yeah. Four for the flop, and it'll be James first to speak. I can't imagine he's liking three callers behind him with ace-jack. He wouldn't, would you? Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. The nuts for Jorg Muller. Mm. Fraser's got two pair and Aikenhead on the ace. And it's a straight flush draw for Muller in addition to the straight. I guess. Aiken head sticking, he's got a bet here. But if he's any good, it'll be the last chips he puts in this pot. 28,000, and for Miller, the question of whether to call or raise such a strong hand that he might think think he's got a better chance of getting on by raising it right now. He doesn't. He's called. And Fraser, looking at his stack. Now, Ian will know. This is all or nothing for him. He's gone for it. Okay, this is the end of... Uh I mean, Frazier has to hit a queen or a 10 to get out of this now. Akinet is a triv fold now. It's is it? Yeah, it's a trivial fold. It went. And is he is he more scared of, of Muller's flat call or Frazier's all in? Well, he's already folded. Uh, he's just afraid of the sick aggression out there. He, it looks like two pair of flush. I mean, or straightener. And is there no way? I mean, free and Frazier, you just can't get away from this. He's only got 100,000 in chips, two no, pair. No, both, both hands are fine. Queen 10 has to go. I, Ahead, eh? Yeah. Cool. Ian Frazier's going to lose all of his chips. He it's can't avoid it. No one can. Say the least. <coughs> For the Razor, he's had a couple oh, of unfortunate situations. This one just yeah. unlucky. 
And probably. No, he has tw around, uh, <laughs> he has six outs for the last card. I feel too confident here, boys. He ain't feeling it. Oh, it's a terrible. Started out so well right now, just not, not his not day. Okay. Not his day. That's harsh. And the, the wow. thing about this triple stack, even though you got that many chips, you get skunked up, you're just oh. gonna be out. One of the great players in the six-seater format for Ian Fraser, out second level. Jorg Muller, feeling pretty good. Jorg Muller feels phenomenal. He just, he's he's now in second place, you know? He, King Jack of Spades is a very strong hand. He played it correctly. For a second, I thought he had folded it. And uh, he, he just flopped the nutter butter and that was that. You've been at the table for a little while having a look at the play, so it's been quite tight out there. Do you want to categorize some of the play for us? Yeah, I mean, um, it's exactly how I thought it was going to be. No one was going to put a chip in apart, um, apart from Luke. This is how I thought it was, and, and he started off. You know, um, the couple of qualifiers haven't played a hand, and I don't know that the, the guy um, in C8 hasn't played a hand, which is exactly what you know I expected. So I, I got in early, mixed it up, and... I tried to bluff a guy who had aces, so that sort of art. Um, I got a big bump on the head with that, and, and that was it really, and then the next stand, and um, I'm out as. Well, we're really sorry to see you go, and commiserations going out so early. Thanks very Thank much. No problem. It'll be Adams in the big blind, Aiken head under the gun, and on a count already. Deep stack though. Full flush on the button. That's a lot more than he needs to raise from here, I think. Raise 10, big hand. And the quick call by Adams. It's a big flop. Wow, top two pair. And yeah, you're really no. trapped. You have king six of diamonds. You, you just got to let it go. This is just... Well, Otherwise. if Jason Adams... And he's announced oh. raise. And, and the situation here, Phil, that he's just decided, look, my table image is tight. Luke is playing so many pots. I'm just going to... This is, I'm, my, this is going to get through all the times he doesn't have yep. a monster. Yep, and it's going to get through some of the times when he has ace-deuce and ace-five and stuff like that. Uh, what he doesn't know is it's never getting through. <laughs> and this call by Luke Schwartz, this is not a call because he thinks he might be behind? No, it's a call to see if he can get more chips in the pot. Wow, this is interesting. Now, Okay, he's got a flush draw now, and... Uh, a hundred thousand. He also there. knows he's lo he's losing, so he's thinking, well, if I bet, I can win two ways. He can fold, or if he calls, I can get there. I don't know if Luke. Got a set of fours under there. Luke knows he's way ahead. Oh, he's asked about a set or of fours. Or way behind. I mean, Adams has bet thirty-six. Now it's a little bit of an under bet, so Luke doesn't want to give a free card to a to a to something like a draw. Yeah, but there's a lot of hands like Queen Jack of Diamonds that are. Ace four. He's hoping ace four or ace seven. Ace four or fours. Which one? So he thinks that Jason's got something. I, I think he's gonna. Did he raise? And no, it, he just it, it must be something about wow. Jason Adams' table image that Luke is discounting the bluff. If it comes a diamond, he's getting paid off. It's interesting because at, on the river, I'm pretty sure what's going to happen is it's going to go. He, Okay, now it's just going to go call, because he knows it's a negative pre-roll by re-raising. He's going to get called by all... Uh, he's going to get called by ace-queen, and... 56. He, I mean, ace-7, ace-4, oh, he gosh. might get called. Is it ace-4? Or is it set of fours? Which one? <laughs> set of fours. You don't even play ace-4 to me. Ace-4 suited, though. Hmm. Ace-4? Not even ace four, is it? He seems to actually be getting a, re a reasonable read off Jason Adams. Does he think he's 
Oh, it's so much pocket fours, isn't it? Wow. He's never folding, by the way, guys at home. He knows he's 100% calling. I suppose I can say if it's pocket fours, a good game, really, isn't it? Jason, it's a big bet. I'm all in. Oh, wow. wow. He's hoping to get called by ace seven and ace four. You know, he's he's going for a value, uh, it's a value shove. Wow. But I don't like this play necessarily because it's full. All the worst hands are folding and only hands I can consider calling that you're beating are ace four and ace seven. Every other hand, queen ten is a fold. Uh, you know, all the hands that are beating you are snap calling. So you got pocket tens in there? No. I've got ace ten. Good nothing. I'll tell you what, though, Phil, Full Flush's style of playing a lot of them, the hands got him action there, didn't it? Yeah, Apples. big time. I haven't lost, like, many heads-up matches for, like, 18 months, um, maybe two years. I owned off of Eurosites heads-up. No one could make a coin on there for, like, in 2008. And in 2009, I beat everyone on full tilt. I didn't lose to one person. And like, if I ever do lose, I feel like I've gotten unlucky. So that's kind of why I'm the best heads up player. I don't expect anyone on this table to be a bit more aggressive than me. So they could just be a nit and be saying, and I'll be raising their blind the whole time. And they're saying in their head, oh, I know he's got nothing, but I fold. If they take a start taking a stand, then, uh, then they'll be doing the right thing. But no one really does. So I'll probably steamroll this table. It's funny how these online players, and back in the day, they would play like four tables, 10, 25. Now they're talking about 16 tabling 2-4, you know? I, I can't even play more than two tables. I'm a dinosaur. Three and I'm like, I, my head is spinning with speed. I can't take it. Aces and full flush is getting on with these. He has played a lot of hands and now somebody might think, oh. And he plays them all the same way. Just a little bitty raise. Yeah. If, uh-oh, if Aikenhead picks up a big card here, is it trouble? Oh, this is trouble for James, because Luke's preflop aggression is really high, and this is, I would raise. I have the button, I have ace-king, I'm against the guy that's been playing a lot of hands, I would make it, Aikenhead's uh, got I would make it 40,000 or something. He's just wow. called. He has just he ha called. He has temporal perception, he can taste something out there. That, wow. That's insane because, you know, 60-something big blinds, if he raises there, he really has to get them all in oh, the yeah. pot he's getting flop. Yeah, once he raises, he's sort of committed. Now he's not going broke. He is not, he was about to wow. go broke, he's he not to go going broke. broke. This is why James keeps making final tables, folks. <laughs> wow, he's gonna fold here. Because this looks like a, looks like it could have hit my opponent is what James is thinking. Uh, uh, James, by the way, maybe he's letting them, he thinks his ace high is strong enough, he's going to let Luke hang himself. If he does that, he's going to call and then fold the turn to more aggression, I think. I'd, or if he raises, he's going to get a clear answer right here, because it would come re-raise fold. Well, I'm just wondering, Phil, so he called. Now he's calling, he's thinking the ace high is good, he has a backdoor flush draw. Uh, it's going to be a disaster if an ace or a king peels off. And, and for Luke, is his hand so strong now that he wants to sort of check raise? Or is it just I'm getting a three 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 streets of aggression of a uh, value? Uh, no, I think Luke would bet here. He, his opponent could have Ace Nine of Hearts, you know, six. I don't know, it, King Jack of Spades. Their hands, you know, where he's just got a bet, and he. I think he'll make a big bet. Funny enough, I got a feeling he's going to make a big bet, hoping that maybe Queen Ten of Spades. Who knows? You know, these are all. Let's see what he bet. It feels Four like two. two thirds of the pot. Two thirds. Okay. Now James has an easy out. Wow. A hand where he should have. I'm saying should have. <laughs> the, the way I would have played, I would have been broke as James. You know. I'm just wondering, Phil, if the reason James did this, he had about 60 big blinds to start the hand. If he had 100, he could have re-raised. If he had 40 or 50, he's going to shove. He just had that number where he didn't want to go broke pre-flop. It's so sick. If James wins this match, it will be because of a large part because he didn't go broke in that hand where. I think most players in this format against a guy who's playing a ton of hands would have lo lost a lot of chips there. Two different styles here, but reaping rewards for Luke Schwartz. He's putting chips in the pot at every chance and getting plenty more back. You know, you talk about a guy playing big hands well and stuff like that. 
it's, there's something about a class pass when everybody else would go broke. It's just, there's something yep. about it. Luke is aware that he's played a lot of hands, and so I don't think he's, uh... uh -oh. Wow. Eleven. Eleven from the button. At, oh, uh, this is a must raise. This is different now as well because Yevgeny's got a bigger stack, and is and from James's point of view, Yevgeny's thinking about playing more hands. So the Ace King looks stronger now. I think. Also, he, he's out of position, isn't he? And it's it's big blind button. Yeah, I think this is uh, we're going to see some money moving here for sure. It's and no one's going to fold, you know. Title. Everything right now leans towards all in and call. Well, it's funny because, yeah, I don't see either one getting away. Actually, you know what I think? I think if Timoshenko goes big raise, I think James will fold, as sick as that is. Because he had 240 at the start of the hand, right? Now he's put 50 in. James is not out of it if he just folds. Cole. Yep, okay. chips are there, and it's a straight race here yep. for James Tournament Life. This is massive. Uh, by the way, the math of it is it's a trivial call. I mean, because if you see the guy's hand face up, it would have been an amazing fold, but you're, it's really a race. In the end, it's still a race. I mean, it's not really a race. 43.57 is not a race, but this is a monster pot. 482,000 out there. Is it really 43.57? I thought it was 50.50. Me, uh, me too, but there must be a dead card out there. Holy well, it's not 50.50 anymore. Oh my lord, top set. Aikenhead is gone. He needs he needs diamond diamond, I think. Or or he needs the board to pair. King ace or a diamond. He'd much the ace of diamonds would be the dream card because now then he has ten or jack or an ace of diamonds. Okay. It's wow. given him two outs. Wow. A king as well? No, no, no. Okay. Two kings <laughs> in the deck or Timoshenko monster mash. Oh, uh, if that was the turn card, imagine. And for James Aikenhead, it looked like it was always against him here tonight, Phil. Yeah, he had hands too. He survived longer than most people would have. <laughs> And for Timoshenko, <laughs> is he the one man in the world who runs better than James Aiken at 846,000 out of 2.4 million in play, Phil? It's impressive, and uh, he's a fine player, and he's been getting a lot of good hands, and he's been getting a lot of action on his big hands. So um, it's going to be hard now. You can play fantastically, and every once in a while in poker, unfortunately, you run ace-king into a pair, which hits a board, and uh, really unlucky there for you, James. What were your thoughts on the table so far, though? Uh, well, it's pretty early on. It's pretty, pretty early exit. Mm -hmm. um, didn't really get much uh, chance to play, play at all. But, yeah. You know, um, if any raise the button, I have ace-king in the big blind. I'm re-raising to call a shove, and he shoves. And Queens is the top of his range. Like, what, it doesn't matter. I, mean, I guess I'm racing, so... Um, yeah, you're unlucky to run into the top of his range there, obviously. You'd think he'd be doing that with a, a much wider range of hands? It's possible he could show me his queen, yeah. So, you know, yeah. I guess that's uh, it's a bit unlucky. But, um, I mean, it's unlucky to go up against uh, Jeff Kenny because he runs all of me. <laughs> that's saying something. <laughs> This is the Party Poker World Open 5. James Aikenhead was unable to make it yet another big final table, unfortunately for him. Six remain, though, and the action continues. How early yeah. is it? Six players, average stack, I guess an even 400K a piece. So yeah. with three and 6,000 blinds, even the short stacks, you're talking 35 big blinds? You, you know, as each player dies, as long as you get some of the chips, and the blinds go up, the concept is you'll, the ratio of stack to blinds will still be the Great. same, you know? 12, and Muller here, just a min raise. Nice. 
By the way, I, I'm kind of in a calm mood, but I like calling or folding here. I, I think they're both fine dishes and trees. Slight problem. Schaefer's the short stack on the table. He's down to 150,000. Oh, then I like folding. If I didn't see a stack, yeah, that's... Just over 20 big blinds. I think. Different spot here for full flush Schwartz, obviously. He not only has a lot of chips, he's got a lot more than Jorg Muller. Okay. This hand would be a, a lot stronger for Schwartz if it was a king of clubs. 12,000. Funny, I think if it was a king of clubs, I would call, and this pot I would call. So difficult. I to guess I'd, I'd still call. Yeah, right. So difficult to play hands out of position. It really is. But you know, the best players. Uh oh, can they get away from something like this? Well, I think he. I think he can. Uh, that here means a king or two, but oh. Muller's got some game, doesn't he? Yeah. <coughs> And see, this is where he's thinking of turning a value hand. Like he's trying to get an ace to pay and be sick that the ace queen okay. calls, you know, because he has just an ace beat narrowly. Of course, I don't think we're going to see a raise here, just because it's a negative free roll. But he right, he's I mean for sure calling it. If he just can't really expose himself to the possibility of a re-raise, he would have to fold. Raised so. to twenty-four thousand. Do you like this play? I don't really like it. You're saying it's impossible for him to get called by anything he beats. No, it's not impossible. It's poker, but I just think the numbers, when you multiply them against each other, Schwartz is never bluffing here with a air, and he's always raising with a king or, you know. Wouldn't it be sick if he got some sort of value bet out of this and Schwartz thinks he's bluffing with an ace? I don't think he will. Schwartz might think he's bluffing to try and get him to fold an ace. I mean, it's some, it's like levels on levels, isn't it? Right. But I think it's <coughs> in the end. I just don't think the numbers are in the favor of the raise. Either. No way. Wow. The raise was brilliant. Kudos to that raise. I can't. Wow. I wonder what the. This Jorg Muller, I has think. <clears throat> that was really interesting. I guess he's raising and he expects to fold if he gets re-raised. Uh, kudos for getting the extra bets. I wouldn't have played it that way, but Luke Swartz must have a... He has a vibe on Swartz of uh, you're going to... You gonna you you think I'm bluffing. Is that it? That has to be it. And for Jorg Muller, he may not be so comfortable in front of the cameras, but when it comes to the technical side of bets and raises, this guy is pretty strong. Nice little hand for Timo. Six plus nine and Jorg. Wow. Is this a cooler? We raised to 35,000 total. What do the dynamics of the table say? Or should you throw those out the window? <sighs> wow. We raised all Wow, this is just oh incredible. Gosh. Nines hates this. Tens hates it. It's actually Plus. got ace queen is very lucky for uh, the way the stacks have gone. Amazing stuff. One thing Andy Ward has definitely done is got his chips in first. He doesn't know how good his situation is. He got, he has a good situation because he has huge fold equity here. Tens is thinking I'm against queens or jacks, right? Or ace king minimum. <clears throat> ace queen of diamonds looks like ace king right now, of course, and it is to Ward, who might get a fold fold. Yeah, Ward. these guys don't want to lose two hundred thousand on a on a, what they're hoping is for a race. One. They surely expect they, he is a nice pair. Raise, re-raise, shove. I think we're going to see a good fold. <coughs> they're both folding. I think they're both going to fold, yeah. There's nothing you can do. That's a good fold. You can't feel bad, even though you have the best hand. You're, you're not at the table. You don't get to see that he has ace, queen of diamonds, you know? You don't get to see that. Tell you what, Andy Ward stuck that money in like one of those Super Bowls in a crowded room. Ricochet rabbit. Called. He's called. Oh. What a what a what a call! Now, now Evgeny's going to be sick when he sees how much shot, how much. Now Evgeny's praying for 
<coughs> well, he's praying for an ace or a queen to have vindication, you know? Nines are holding Holy right now. Cow. Nines are very strong. Something in the 75 25 range. Is this the end of Andy Ward? 70 30. And those two tens will get him out now that Yevgeny folded. Now a 10 ace or a queen. River. 10 outs. Ran wow. ragged. Wow, it's incredible. And Andy Ward out. And the 200 stack oh, guys. goes <coughs> to, to a player on Yevgeny's left. Yeah, for Andy Ward, well, he got his chips in first every time. Uh, he's probably surprised to get called by those nines. A bit rattled, I think. Well, new stats really starting to tell the story, five-handed. V-chip, the percentage of times a player voluntarily puts chips in the pot, and Luke Schwartz, that's his style. He likes to play lots of hands. Total aggression reflects the percentage that players bet or raise rather than calling in Timoshenko. He takes control. He's a three better. When he's in a pot, he never calls. Unfortunately, we've lost one of our hometown favorites here in Andy. It was a squeeze that just ran into a hand. Is that right? Basically, yeah, it's a pretty standard play. Yeah. Um, with the ice queen suit, it's got a lot of value against, against the hands that people are raising and, and re-raising with in that spot. So I thought it was pretty standard, and he's called me with nines, which is fine. And then we're off to the races, and yeah. uh, some you win and some you don't. Now, taking a look at the players that were at the table there, obviously they must have been playing quite aggressively and opening a fair amount and re-raising a fair amount for you to, to want to do that there too. Yes, more and more as the game goes on, you can see um, Luke opening up and you have Jenny opening up and Jorg opening up as well. So it was becoming more aggressive as it went along, which is what I was expecting. So I thought, you know, as you say, yeah. the, the conditions were pretty right for that, yeah. Okay, well, commiserations and thanks very much for talking to us. Uh, not to worry, next time. <laughs> <laughs> Lines up to five and ten thousand. Just a little more traffic in the back there at the Palm Beach Casino. Hello. Exactly. He's going to do twenty-five to thirty. That's what he's nice been doing. Okay, keeping it standard. It doesn't take long in poker, huh? Before natural disasters collide. Th this, this is a cooler. Yeah, Only one thing cooler, can happen. Because against. I mean, against the range, he's going to get a fold a lot of times, but it's going to be a snap all in, all in. Because, you know, your opponent doesn't have to have ace-king. Your opponent can have ace-jack, pocket eights. And it, by the way, you are in the all best in. spot. Luke Schwartz is now interested in the sides of that bet because it looks like a manageable stack. Turns out it's 218. <coughs> Remember, that's, that's a uh, 10, 20x bet. 20x x being the big blind. It's 510. Put in 200. So it's a it's a technical fold. No way. 350. You know. Oh no, him. I'm talking about him. One of those guys can easily have the overpair. So. What is Luke have to think more about right now? Schaefer's hand with the 218,000. Muller's hand with 500,000 behind him. Okay. What Schwartz is is thinking about and should be thinking about is the math of the situation and that it's just wrong. Uh, it's betting patterns. You just look at the betting patterns and the stack sizes, and you can never call. You can't call 20x there after it goes raise, raise. It's just triv. Um, unless you're some hyper soul reading cranium genius that can just go into the souls and, and you see that he has, you know, pocket eights and, and a seven. But, like, you just can't. You just can't. And you're just getting peace with it. You know, he's a good player. He'll, he'll make the right, the right decision here. Sometimes you just have to make peace with the fold first. Even though you know you're going to fold, you know, you got to come to that moment where you, I like that term, your emotions catch up with the math, you know. It's amazing. He's just having his emotions catch up. Because every time he makes the motion of folding, he gets sick inside. He's like, wow, I finally have a hand, you know. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, the only, the only reason to call here would be if he feels like he needs to gamble the win. In. But he doesn't. And what's Muller going to do? <coughs> Muller's pretty sick right now. Oh, Lord, look at this. He has fold equity here. Well, yeah, he, he, but it, it doesn't really matter because he, he still needs to hit a 9. He, he wants the guy to be in, actually, I suppose, because you need a 9 to win anyways. 
Muller lays it down. That's great for Schaefer, by the way, because Schaefer now just goes shooting up from 80-20 to like, you know, he wasn't 80-20 before that fold. Any ace or a king is going to make Mueller sick. You fold that. You fold. You and me. He's seeking counsel. Give Genny. So close, isn't it? If, you, if I don't have two players behind, it's a snap though, isn't it? Yeah. Internet players are fun for post-mortem. They're, they're just passionate about it, and that's why they're so strong and keep getting stronger. That the player can ask right afterwards, seeing that he may have, might have made a mistake. And now Mueller, of course, Drop is sick the seeing the two kings. Well, the good news for Schwartz, he's got about 200 and something thousand back. Uh, bad news, he's behind. There's some split pots here now. Yep, yeah, but it's true. still more out than two. Jack. <laughs> he wants a queen, you know? Or a king or a jack. Or a king or a jack, that's right, he's got the right. Okay, it really is <coughs> down to just the damn nine. Um, it w but what I'd like to say is Schwartz was very honest, and right after that he was going into learning mode, asking Evgeny, you know, a technical moment, whatever. So it, it just shows you how these guys are just going to, they're strong today and they're going to keep getting stronger. And we listen to this swing around, Phil. Schaefer has 480,000. Had wow. Schwartz folded, Mueller, Mueller calls and yep. takes him out and has a massive stack. We're partway through the first heat here at the Party Poker World Open 5 at the Palm Beach Casino in London. Join us next time when our remaining players fight it out for their spot at the final table. It's all to play for in this fierce contest between some of the biggest names in the game. Next time, can Yevgeny hold on to his lead? It's definitely going to break me down. <laughs> or will Poker's new bad boy make a comeback? Yes! Just got to lose the fear.